So how do godly men live? Godly men are prayer warriors who love peace. 1 Timothy 2 verse 8 I desire then that in every place the men should pray, lifting holy hands without anger or quarrelling. The phrase, in every place, explicitly indicates that these instructions are applicable not just in the Ephesian church, but in every church, in every place, all over the world. You can see that the use of this phrase, in every place, used in that way, to refer to every location across the world, you can see how it's used in 1 Corinthians 1 verse 2. I bring up this clarification because uh, a lot of times the feminists like to say that the instructions uh, contained in uh, 1 Timothy 2, especially verse 11 and 12, for some reason is only restricted to the Ephesian church, a very special situation. But the reality is in this section, in every place, it refers to churches all over the world, not just in, in the Ephesian, uh, not just in Ephesus. So in every place, men should pray, lifting holy hands without anger or quarreling. Godly men are prayer warriors. They pray often, both in private and also in public. Hands are lifted up, begging God for help. Help me, God. But these hands reaching out to God for help must be holy hands. There should be no anger, no quarreling. Godly men love peace. Unfortunately, my opponents slanderously charge me with divisiveness and ungodliness. Obviously, it's not going to be surprising when they blame me for angry quarrels. And I can just only give two responses uh, briefly amongst other responses in the future. Now, two responses. Firstly, I will also post my prayers which are taken almost word for word from the Psalms. I post it on this YouTube channel. You just listen to the tone, listen to the content of the biblical prayers. They are obviously angry prayers in the Psalms. The key question to ask is whether this prayer is prayed out of unrighteous anger or righteous anger. Note that the Holy Spirit inspired the prayers contained in the Psalms. So obviously, God accepts prayers motivated by righteous anger. So that's my first response. I will pray, including angry prayers, and not try to restrain it. Number two, second response. God puts the blame for quarrels and division solely on false teachers. Solely on false teachers. God never blames someone who is trying to contend against false teachers. God never blames uh, the person who is trying to contend for the truth and say the conflict's all because of you. Never. Where, where do I get the evidence? 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 3 to 4. If anyone teaches a different doctrine, false teachers, and does not agree with the sound words of our Lord Jesus, the Anointed One, and does not agree with the teaching that accords with godliness, he, that false teacher, is puffed up with conceit and understands nothing. He has an unhealthy craving for controversy and for quarrels about words, which produce envy, dissension, slander, evil suspicions. You see here, clearly, God blamed the teachers of different doctrines for, the cra for craving controversy, for craving quarrels. God blamed the teachers of, the, of different doctrine for the quarrels which produce envy and the breakdown of all peaceful Christian relationships. It's their fault. They taught the different doctrine. They didn't agree with the sound words of the Lord Jesus. They didn't agree with the teaching that is in line, in accords with godliness. Their teaching is ungodly. It promotes ungodliness. My opponents accuse me of being divisive, but God blames them, not me. If I'm blamed for trying to correct wrong doctrine which promotes ungodliness, then Timothy should be blamed too. But Paul didn't blame Timothy. Instead, he told Timothy to confront those who taught different doctrines. 
He's not even going to let Timothy just keep quiet. He tells Timothy, go, tell them to stop, confront them. 1 Timothy 1 verse 3. As I, Paul, urged you, Timothy, when I was going to Macedonia, remain at Ephesus so that you may command certain persons not to teach different doctrine. No, not, not that Timothy is going to go up nicely and say, uh, can you please stop teaching? But okay, if, if, if you want to continue, that's up to you, you know. Just uh, agree, let's agree to disagree. No, Paul said, give them a command. Do not teach different doctrine. Now, obviously, the person who was teaching different doctrine, who now has Timothy coming up to him and saying, hey, you got to stop it. That's not an I'm not giving you an option. You have to stop. What you're teaching is different from what uh, Paul and the other apostles have been teaching us. It's different and you have to stop it. We are not going to agree to disagree. Stop. Now, can you imagine how that person might react? Uh, he would say, hey, who are you? Let's agree to disagree. Why, why are you so confrontational? Now, can you imagine Paul accepting protests from such teachers of different doctrine? Hey, Paul, after you left Timothy with us in Ephesus, he is always craving controversy and always telling us we should not teach this, we should not teach that. You know, don't you know how quarrelsome he is? Don't, don't you know how he has damaged Christian unity and love and, and peace? So divisive. What would Paul reply? Paul would just say straight to that guy. I was the one who told him. I was the one who gave him the... Com I told him to command you guys to stop teaching different doctrine. So the problem is with me, Paul. Not the problem. The problem is not with Timothy. He was just following what I told him to do. So to the false teachers out there who slanderously accuse me of being divisive and quarreling and angry and da da da, don't twist 1 Timothy 2 verse 8. I desire then that in every place the man should pray, lifting holy hands without anger and quarreling. Don't twist this and then make it an attempt to shut down my attempt to correct your different doctrine. You just blame me for creating a quarrel. And all the people who don't read carefully just say, yeah, I see, not peaceful, you're quarreling, angry. You teach different doctrine from the anointed one and the apostles. You're not reflecting what they say. You're just twisting their words. God will hold you responsible for the controversies and the quarrels that come out of it. False teachers who teach different doctrine, but still are in the church. Oh, they sure look pious with their prayers. Uh, they, whether they lift their hands or not, in the crossing, they definitely won't raise their hands. They look too charismatic. But if they do, their hands are not holy hands anyway. They're defiled hands. After all, that false teaching does not accord with godliness. Their false teaching accords with ungodliness. It has filled the church with ungodliness. So let's summarize this one verse. Godly men should be prayer warriors who love peace. However, that does not mean... Loving peace does not mean staying silent when people are teaching different doctrine. Okay? That will contradict what Paul has said elsewhere. But while controversy rages, godly men will be on our knees, holy hands lifted up, waging a spiritual war through prayer. And God must answer and God must help me. So that's how godly men is supposed to behave. Now, what about godly women? <laughs> 